Here we have Brother Hobby's R5 2207 motor in 2400 and 2700 kV. Uh, this motor has had been released uh, for a couple of months already and uh, I hadn't had a chance to review it and I was getting a lot of requests from people to test them and review them. Uh, so Brother Hobby went ahead and sent them to me uh, for testing. So thanks Brother Hobby for sending it. I had had a chance to test and review the R3 version of the 2207 in 2550 kV. Uh, so this uh, motor review is on the channel. So I'm gonna link it there in the corner. Uh, so pretty good motor performed quite well. And this one is, uh, as far as the Brother Hobby series, uh, this is the R3, so it's one step below the R5. Uh, still, it did uh, quite well on the thrust test. Uh, so we'll go ahead and give a little bit of comparison between the two, see what the differences are. And uh, uh, of course, uh, and then after you guys can check out the, uh, the thrust test. Although this one is a different KV, it's 2550. So it's like in between these two. So you can't really compare them side by side. Um, because they're different KV, but still, you know, you can uh, see what the what the motors make uh, and and make comparisons. So the as usual, they come in this uh, modest box. So it's better. Uh, don't spend money on fancy boxes. And as usual, they give you the uh, uh, nylock. Uh, a set of screws looks like M3 by 8 so they both look exactly the same same color scheme uh, same size so the only difference is gonna be in the windings and the number of turns in the state and the in each of the windings otherwise other than that they look exactly the same uh, so as far as differences between this one and the R3, uh, you can see uh, they're using uh, the same base. It's got a 16 by 19 mount hole pattern. And right away you can see the R3 uh, uses a circlip uh, for the 3 millimeter shaft. And the R5 uses a retaining screw for the shaft and what I think it's a four millimeter shaft on this one so a difference in shaft diameter as far as the magnets and stator as far as I can tell um, they look pretty much the same if anything maybe the R5 has a little bit thicker magnets but it's it's hard to tell without measuring almost the same uh, really can't tell and uh, of course the R5 has a titanium uh, single piece shaft and the R3 has an integrated shaft integrated into the bell so that's uh, uh, the same material as the bell uh, aluminum 775 alloy and uh, as you can see the armature is just about the same. Uh, the R5 is a little bit taller and I imagine that's to have enough material there to allow for the shaft to be pressed in. So you got enough material uh, for contact between the shaft and the aluminum and, uh, of course, and the color scheme of course. But other than that they're, they look uh, pretty close to each other. Same uh, uh, same pattern on the spokes and uh, uh, they look pretty close so let's uh, see what the weight differences are they both have very similar length of wires I think this one is just slightly longer so but very slightly just uh, maybe three or four millimeters at most I think so let's see what the R3 ways and that's 33.1 
and the R5 32.1 so about a gram difference between the two uh, so that's thanks to the uh, uh, titanium shaft uh, probably most of the weight savings is from from the shaft itself all right so let's get a weight on the motor with the equivalent uh, 50 millimeters of wire so that you'd cut that much wire so let's tear that uh, 2.4 grams and uh, with 50 millimeters of wire the motor is going to be 29.6 so very lightweight motor uh, excellent weight for a 2207 thanks to all the uh, weight savings features titanium shaft uh, and the naked bottom style of the motor so pretty nice and light all right, so I'm gonna remove the retaining shaft and uh, I've already heated up for a little bit uh, because uh, it was kind of tight. Sometimes they use this uh, white Loctite that is very hard to break the screws loose. So you wanna make sure to use a good hex key because otherwise you end up rounding the heads of the screws and then it's gonna be really hard to remove. So I applied a little bit of heat um, always, you know, if you're using the soldering iron, make sure it's not overheating too much. I, you know, after three minutes, I kind of touch the the bell, make sure it's not too hot. But uh, this white uh, Loctite, sometimes even the heat doesn't loosen it. Uh, so what you do is you gotta press down and turn. There it goes. So good thing it didn't get stuck. And that's going to be a fully hollow shaft, I think. And there it goes. It's hollow all the way through. So that's good. Okay, so once the screw's out, let's uh, remove the bell. And the bearing popped out. So that's actually kind of good. It's easy to remove. So let's have a chance to look at the bearing that's uh looks like a four by eight by three so yes four uh, id and eight millimeters on the od and three mill millimeters uh, width so that's the bearing all right so here's the stator well, without the bearing you can see inside the bearing housing of course, uh, as usual with uh, Brother Hobby Motors, impeccable windings, single strand wire. And there's the bearing. So that should pop right in. Fits nice and tight. And uh, looks like 0.15 millimeter uh, laminations. Let's uh, look at the, let's measure the height of the stator. Uh, seven millimeters, so right on spec. Nice and thick uh, base. And wires, uh, stator wires are nicely tucked in, so nothing coming out of there, so that's good. And here's the bell assembly four millimeter titanium shaft fully hollow and the uh, arc magnets so overall as usual with uh, brother Harvey very nicely constructed motors and uh, these have already been uh, reviewed by a lot of the other popular channels and they always get uh, very good comments uh, they always talk about how smooth and responsive these are so we all know uh, that these these perform outstandingly so all right uh put the screw back on and we'll get them on the uh, thrust stand and see how uh, see where they stack up against the other 2207s
All right, so let's look at the thrust test results uh, for the Brother Hobby R5, 2207, 2700 kV. The motor came in at uh, 2720, so right on the dot. So for this kV and the props I'm testing, 3S and 4S was the most uh, suitable voltage, although I know some people run these very high kV motors on 5S, but on the thrust stand that's just too much load for my equipment and for the motor. As we all know, thrust test on static uh, conditions really stress the motors and the amps are just too high, so no point in testing these really high kV motors on such a high voltage. Anyway, getting back to the thrust results. On the two blade 5 inch prop from Genfan, the 5045BN, we're getting 1570 grams, so very respectable thrust at uh, very manageable 45 amps. Uh, keep in mind these are max burst uh, numbers, so they only occur for a very short period of time and in addition we're under static conditions so the amps are going to be quite exaggerated. So in flight uh, the equivalent it's going to be about 35 to 40 percent lower max amps and those are also only going to occur under certain conditions whatever you can expect max burst. For instance when you're coming out of the dive or punching out from a standstill or you know like a, when you do a quick 180 turn and then punch out. Uh, so that's when you're gonna see these uh, max numbers and that's what I always report here on on the tables. It's usually the max uh, thrust and max amps. So keep that in mind. Alright so then the next one I went ahead and tested a couple of the five and a half inch props. So the HQ5545 and the 5045BN and what's surprising here is that the 5045 which is a, a prop that was designed to be a five and a half inch prop. It, it performed uh, lower than this 5545BN which I think derives from the 6045 and it's just been cut off at the tips and this one actually does much better. It's kind of interesting that the max uh, load was exactly the same but as you can see the thrust much higher on the BN prop so that's kind of interesting. Uh, so if you're gonna use these two blade prop seems like the best one to use is the BN. You would think the BN would be lower performance because of the bull nose you know those usually create a lot of turbulence and you need more amps to spin it. So then the next one continuing with the 5 inch props uh, the 5043 by 3 which is a kind of a light prop low pitch uh, and it's one of the most efficient props and we can see here is very close to the two blade prop so not much difference as far as amps are concerned and you get a little bit more thrust so then the next one the 5040x4 I don't know if anybody's flying this anymore I don't see that many people flying this 4 blade prop uh, so in case some people are interested so you don't gain that much more thrust uh, and then the amps go up a little bit compared to the 5043 uh, so then the next one the DAL C5046 Again, this is one of those props that uh, doesn't show particularly high thrust, but as we all know, this is a very fast prop in the air. Uh, once it's unloaded and it starts spinning at, at a very high RPM, that's where the prop, this prop performs quite well. Similar to the Gem Fan Flash 5152, a lot of people ask me why I don't include that one and the reason is because uh, that prop is just simply not designed to perform on static conditions. It really needs moving air to perform well. So on the thrust stand it will actually show low performance, even lower than the HQ 5043x3, but we all know that's a much faster prop than the 5043. But when you look at the thrust numbers, it's lower than the 5043 and it, it doesn't show what the actual performance is so that's why I don't include it. Same thing with the racecraft props those are also have been designed to have moving air through them and perform under dynamic conditions. I imagine it's the same for the Emax Avan prop all those are kind of like specialty props they've been designed from the ground up for fast conditions. Okay so then we get into the heavy uh, 5 inch tri-blade so this one always shows high thrust 1718 at uh, still quite manageable 55 amps again you gotta remember to multiply that times 0.6 to get you an approximation to the actual amps you're gonna see in the air and again that's only gonna be max burst so you'll only see it for a short time so that's why you know we can fly these props with 
these motors uh, using a 1300 milliamp battery because once in the air props on load quite a lot so the amps are gonna be quite a lot lower especially when you have a very light build there's not much load on the motors and they'll be able to just spin fast without uh, drawing that many amps then on to the 6 inch props I don't know if anybody will use this high KV motor with 6 inch props on 4S it seems like it's just not a, a good match you know you do see high numbers but at the cost of very high amps uh, and most likely you'll need a a large battery like a 1500 or 1800 so so I don't know if anybody uses these uh, high KV motors with uh, 6 inch props that, but I always include them just in case somebody wants to see it does kind of show you also the capability of the motor you know how much torque it has to drive the props uh, so you know it uh, we can compare motor to motor and if you know if a motor can make more thrust on a 6 inch prop than the other then we know that motor is is going to be ultimately quite uh, powerful. So, uh, so there you go. That's the thrust test for this motor. Uh, hope you find that useful. And uh, until the next video, thank you for watching.